Welcome to Excel Campus. My name is John and this is the second video in a series on pivot tables and dashboards. In the first video we met Andy and learned about a project his boss has given him. He needs to take this sheet of data and turn it into a nice looking dashboard. We learned how to create our first pivot table and pivot chart. In this video we're going to create a few more pivot tables and learn how they can help us answer questions about our data. I will explain how we can use the different calculation types to investigate the source data and how to update your pivot tables with more data. And finally, I will demonstrate how PivotPal helps make some of these processes faster and easier. Alright, so this is the pivot table and pivot chart that we created in the first video. And I now want to build out some additional pivot tables and charts that we will ultimately add to our dashboard. So instead of inserting a brand new pivot table, I'm just going to make a duplicate copy of this sheet and then modify the new sheet. So to make a duplicate copy of the sheet, the easiest way to do that is you just left click and hold down on the sheet like you're going to drag it over to the right. Then hold down the control key on the keyboard and let go of the left mouse button. That'll make a duplicate copy of the sheet. So now we can just modify this pivot table, our other pivot table still intact. And the other nice advantage of this is uh, we don't have to format the chart again. The chart's already formatted for us and it will update as we make changes to the pivot table. So now I want to see a report that shows my sales by product category. So I'm going to go ahead and remove salesperson out of the rows area here. And you'll see that's updated the pivot table. So now the only thing in the pivot table is the sum of revenue. And that shows up here and in our chart as well. And now I want to add the product category into my pivot table. So I'm going to find category here in the list. Drag it into the rows area. And now that's added all of our product categories here, the rows area. And I also want to sort this. So I'm going to right click here, go to sort largest to smallest. So now we can quickly see that this company is selling a lot of beverages. That's their top performing category uh, than dried fruits and nuts and sauces. So those are really their top three performing categories. And I actually want to limit this list to just the top 10 categories. So we can quickly do that with a pivot table. I'm just going to click on the filter button here in the rows, the rows area. And then I'm going to go to value filters and choose top 10. And that'll bring up this window and it's basically going to ask us um, what we want to show. In this case, we want to show the top 10 items by sum of revenues. So it's already set up for us. I'm just going to click OK. And now that'll just filter this list for the top 10 items. And of course, you'd want to rename the title of this chart and this sheet as well. So now I'm going to, again, make a duplicate copy of the sheet so we can start building out more pivot tables. So again, left click, drag over, hold the control key and release. That'll make a duplicate copy. And I want to show you some different calculation types that the pivot table can do because so far we've only been dealing with the sum of revenue. First thing I'm going to do though is clear out this filter because remember we applied this top 10 filter. So I'm just going to click the clear filter button and that's going to again show us all the uh, categories here. So now I want to start answering some more questions about uh, my category sales. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the unit price here in the values area and that's going to give me a sum of unit price um, which actually isn't that all that interesting of a calculation uh, because there's different products within these categories so I actually want to see the average unit price so I'm going to right click here go to value field settings and now from this window there's some different metric options and I'm going to I want to calculate the average instead of the sum so I'm just going to click average and click OK and now that's showing us the average unit price now. And we can see that for beverages, our average unit price is around $23. Jams and preserves is a little higher at 43. So what that means is our volume for beverages is probably higher. And to see that, we can just take the quantity uh, field and put it in the values area. And now we have a sum of quantity. And of course, we can see here that we sold a lot of beverages, 763. And that's just about the highest out of uh, all the product categories. The other thing that might be interesting to know is how many orders we sold for each of these categories. So again, I'm going to take the quantity field and drag it into the values area. And instead of sum, I actually want the count. So I'm going to go to value field settings. And now I'm going to choose count from this list. Hit OK. And so now that's showing me the count of orders or the count of rows in my data set for each of these product categories. And the other thing that kind of sticks out here is this blank row. So we have a row of product categories that are blank and you can see there's eight 
eight rows, basically, of blank product categories. So let's see what's going on with these because the boss is definitely going to ask about that when he sees this report. So I'm going to filter the category field here for blanks. I'm just going to go down to the bottom, filter for blanks. And that's basically showing us that here's these eight blank rows uh, that we're seeing in the pivot table. And we can see there's no product name here. There are some shipping fees. So this might be some kind of shipping fee. And we'd obviously want to ask our billing department about that. But for now, I'll just put shipping fee in the category so we at least know what it is. So with those selected, I'm going to use the Alt semicolon shortcut to select visible cells. Then I'm going to type shipping fee in here. And now I'm going to hold down the control key on the keyboard and hit enter. And that'll fill that uh, value or formula in all the selected cells. Control enter does that. So now if we go back to the pivot table, we'll see it still says blank here because the pivot table needs to be refreshed. And you can do that with any cell selected in the pivot table. You can go to the Analyze or Options tab, and there's a Refresh button right here. You can also right-click the pivot table and click Refresh. And then the keyboard shortcut is Alt F5. So I just refreshed there, and now we can see we have our shipping fee down here, and we have a total of eight of those. So that makes a little more sense since there's no revenue and uh, no quantity coming in for shipping fees. Okay, so I want to show you one of my other favorite calculations. I'm just going to make a copy of the page here. I'm going to um, remove a few of these fields here, and I'm just going to keep some of revenue. A lot of times you ask the question, okay, we have a sum or we have revenue for beverages of 17,452. What is that as a percentage of our total revenue? And you can quickly answer that with a pivot table. So I'm going to add our revenue field into the values area again. And that's just created sum of revenue. This time I'm going to right click, go to value field settings and show values as this tab here. And now we're going to choose calculation as a percentage of grand total. Click OK. And you can see now that's automatically created that uh, calculation percentage of grand total. So we can now see that beverages makes up almost 25% of our revenue. And we can see these top three selling categories make up a big chunk of our revenue, over 50%. So over half of our revenue, 56%, is coming from these top three categories here. So then you might ask the question, okay, who's selling in these categories? And we can quickly answer that as well. So if I find my salesperson field here, I'm just going to drag it into the rows area. And now that's automatically added our salesperson. It basically lists all the salespeople that has sold in this specific category. So for each category, it's telling you who has sold in that specific category. And this again provides some interesting metrics because now we can see that Nancy is responsible for selling almost over 10% or 11% of our sales in beverages for the company. So that's a pretty big number. Another interesting way to look at this is if I'm going to take the sum of revenue out of the pivot table and now I'm going to put salesperson over in columns here. And basically what that's done is it's now listed each of our salespeople across the top here of the pivot table. That's all of our salespeople. And then down the left side, we have our categories. So now you can kind of see which salespeople are selling in each category. So you can just kind of look down the list and see everything that Andrew's doing, which product categories he's selling in, which, Anders, which ones Anne are selling in, and so on. So as you can see with a pivot table, you can really just slice and dice all day long and, and do different pivots of your data to find trends and uh, analyze it further. Okay, so I'm now going to show you how we can add more data to our data set. So, so far in this data set, we just have order details for December. But when January rolls around, we're going to want to add that data into this model and then update our pivot table so we can see the data for January as well. So I've been sent the... Uh, order details for January here. And basically, I'm just going to copy it into my data set. So I'm just going to select the first cell here. I'm going to hit Control Shift End on the keyboard. That'll select all my cells there. I'm going to hit Control C to copy those. And now I'm going to go over to uh, my December file. I'm going to hit, hold down the Control key and press the down arrow on the keyboard. That'll take me to the end of this range here. And I'm just going to hit Control V to paste my data right in there. So now I have January data pasted right below my December data. If I go over to my pivot table, uh, the 
the pivot table has not actually been updated yet to include that new data. So we have to update the range of the source data that we first specified when we built the table. So you select any cell in the pivot table here. Go to the Analyze or the Options tab on the ribbon. And we're going to cho choose this Change Data Source button. And that's going to bring up this window. And you can see right now our data range is only going to row 68. But if I scroll down to the bottom here, we now need to extend it all the way to row 83. So you can type row 83 in here. Another little trick you can do is if you just select any cell inside the table here and hit Control A on the keyboard, that's going to basically select all. Control A will select all and it'll select everything in our data range. And so now we've selected everything down to row 83 and click OK. And now you could see that once we did that, the pivot table has been refreshed and updated with the new data. And we have a new total sales of 89,000. All right, so I now want to show you some features of PivotPal that make it faster and easier to work with your source data when you're building out your pivot tables. So if you remember, we were just investigating this blank down here and these eight rows that made up that blank. And to do that, we went over to the Data tab, and then we found the uh, Category field here and filtered for blanks. And basically, that's what we had to do to find those blank rows. Well, PivotPal has a feature that makes this a lot faster and easier. So I'm going to open the PivotPal window here. And basically, the PivotPal has this filter source button that will do all this for us with the click of a button. So I'm just going to select a cell in the values area. In this case, I'm going to select that 8. And then I'm going to click the filter source button. And that will automatically filter our uh, data source for the category of blank. And you can see it's done that here and filtered for blanks and then showing us those eight rows. So this will save you a lot of time when you're investigating your data, especially if you have a pivot table like this that's a little more complex with more fields in it. So let's say that we wanted to investigate this number here, this 5,114, which is a sales for Maria for beverages for the West region. So if I just click the filter source button now, that's filtered my source data for the category of beverages for salesperson Maria for the region of West. And it's also automatically selected the revenue column there. So we can tie out our number. Here's 5,114. And again, it's just basically applying those filters to the data set here. So we could see here's our filter for beverages. If we want to jump over to salesperson, select salesperson in the field list, hit the go to data button, and that'll take us over to the salesperson field. And again, it's shown us that it's applied that filter there. Another nice feature of PivotPal is it allows you to build out your pivot table from your source data sheet. So I'm going to hit Alt-A-C on the keyboard to clear the filters. And now a lot of times what you'll end up doing is you'll end up flipping back and forth between your pivot table and your source data sheet because you're trying to add a field, but you're not necessarily sure of the name of the field. You know the data that's inside that field, but you, you're not necessarily sure of what, how it's named. So you end up flipping back and forth between these. Well, with PivotPal, as you, you can just go to the source data sheet and select any cells. And I select these cells. They're automatically selected in the PivotPal window for you. So you can see I'm just selecting different cells here in the data set. And those fields are then selected for you in PivotPal. And then all you have to do is click one of these buttons to add it to the pivot table. So maybe I want to put this ship name on rows. I can do that by just simply clicking the field and then clicking a button. Maybe I'll put my region in my columns area. So I'm going to click region in the data source, click the columns button, and now I can go back to my pivot and see what that looks like. So now we've started building out our pivot table, but we're doing it from the source data sheet. And, and this just will save you a lot of time because uh, otherwise you spend time just flipping back and forth. And the built-in field list is not available on the source data sheet. So this field list that you typically use to build out your pivot table, that's not available on the source data sheet like it is with the PivotPal window. So in the next video, we're finally going to put our dashboard together. We're going to learn how to group dates into months and years to create a trend chart like this. We're also going to add slicers to our dashboard to make it interactive. And finally, I'm going to show you one of my favorite charts, which is this distribution chart here. So I hope you're as excited as Andy is. And please leave a comment below with any questions or suggestions. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.